Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, I wanted to encourage you uh, to join me in helping... HIV and AIDS uh, orphans in India. I'm doing uh, four half marathons in support of them. And you can help sponsor those at heavensgate.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for our episode of Nick Carter. We had two lost episodes between this week and last week. So here now is the case of the howling horse from September the 30th of 1945. The Linux Show, starring Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented by the three great Linux home brighteners. This is the story of a man known the world over as one of the most daring and resourceful characters in the history of detective fiction. A man whose name has become a symbol of the triumph of right and justice over the sinister forces of crime and lawlessness. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's exciting case, The Howling Horse, in which Nick Carter goes hunting in a forest of death and tracks down a fabulous four-legged killer. enjoyable living, for real contentment, it is necessary that we have time to relax. Time to do the things we like, as well as to do the necessary things. And these days, American homemakers everywhere are learning that one important way to enjoy leisure time is to depend on the three great Linux home brighteners, those magic new shortcuts to beauty for woodwork, furniture, and floors. You, too, can save drudgery each day with those three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss, the modern brush-on finish. Linux cream polish for fine furniture. And Linux self-polishing wax, the amazing new quick-drying wax product. Try these fine modern products designed to help you do your work in record time. You'll find that they're a really efficient way to leisure time for you. Ask your hardware, paint, or department store for the three great Linux home brighteners, the modern shortcuts to new home beauty. And now for today's exciting case from the life of Nick Carter. The lights are out in the old brownstone mansion at the corner of 5th and 4th. In the darkened laboratory, the strange whine of electricity sounds. And under the pale purple aura of ultraviolet light, Nick Carter and Patsy play a strange jigsaw puzzle game with crime. Wait a minute, Patsy. Mm Mm-hmm. This letter A matches the A and bequeath. Just a moment. Yes, an exact duplicate. Make a note of that. Right. Well, making progress. The word here... On this slip. Uh huh. Exactly duplicates the here and hereby bequeath. You got that? I've got it. Better and better. Ah. See that word will in last will and testament? Uh huh. A precise duplicate of the written will from this thank you note. Who's that? Hiya, folks. It's the demon reporter himself in person. Why, it's Scubby. Oh, hello, Scubby. Pardon the interruption, mastermind. The housekeeper let me in. Well, what's cooking, good looking? <laughs> Nick's testing the validity of a will, Scubby. We're matching samples of the dead man's writing with the writing in the will. Oh, very interesting. Do they match? Precisely. Well, then the will is genuine, eh? On the contrary, the will's a forgery. Huh? Now turn off the ultraviolet, Patsy. Put on right. the lights. Hey, I don't get it, Nick. If the writing in the will dovetails with other letters, doesn't that prove the same guy wrote both? No, Scubby. The fact that words in individual letters from old correspondence match words and letters in the will proves someone forged the will by tracing the dead man's handwriting. Very clever. Very clever indeed. It'll make a nice feature article when I finish with my story on the howling horse. It... Did you say howling horse, Scubby? Yes, beautiful. I'm on my way upstate to cover one of the craziest stories that ever hit the desk. I thought Nick might be interested. 
What is it, Scabby? Well, it seems there's a guy upstate named Lucas who has... C.B. Lucas? Three degrees in medicine, archaeology, and natural philosophy? Explored the Gobi Desert in 36? Yeah, the very same. Oh, well, this Lucas must be pretty wealthy. He's got a big estate, about 700 acres of forest and lake. But and... what about that howling horse you mentioned? Well, there's a story that Lucas brought back a couple of horses with him from one of his explorations, and they howl. Nonsense. Oh. They also kill cattle. Ridiculous. These horses of Dr. Lucas also have murdered a man. Oh, no. Well, that's the story I'm going to check. Are you interested, Nick? In horses that murder men? Certainly am. I'll use my car. We should reach the Lucas estate by nightfall. Let's go. Sit down, Mr. Carter. Ma'am? Thank you. The other ten, too. Thanks. I'm mighty happy to have you with us in the burning. Thank you very much, Sheriff Crane. Yes, well, and the case too tough for you to handle, eh, Sheriff? Well, uh, you betcha. It'd be too tough for anybody except Mr. Carter here. Working out of court in anyway. You better explain, Sheriff. Well, it's like this. Lucas ain't amiable, ma'am. Not by a long shot. Keeps himself locked up in that estate. Nobody can get him. Nobody sees him. He kind of acts like he's scared of something. Hiding. But he's a mighty powerful man in this county. Got influential friends. My hands are tied. I can't buck him. But you can, Mr. Carter. I hear you're a fighter that don't care a hoot where the punches land. Well, I try to live up to that reputation, Sheriff Crane. Now, tell me about Lucas's horses. Don't know a thing. He brought them back with him about six months ago. Moved them in in horse vans. Nobody's seen them. Well, pretty soon people started talking about them horses howling. They're sure about them howling? Yep. Then, one or two folks seen one of them running around Lucas's estate. A big black critter. Seen him at night. Mean and ornery. Mm. But pretty soon they started killing cattle. Rip them apart with their teeth. Folks shoot Lucas. He just laughed. Told them they was crazy. Swore he didn't own no horses. I see. Last week, Jed Storm was killed. On the road that passes Lucas's estate. Head was near torn off. Body all ripped to pieces. I figured maybe the law better step in. I had to pull every string I could to even get into Lucas's estate. Search the place from top to bottom, house, barns, everything. Well, sir, Lucas was telling the truth. There ain't no horses there. You're sure, Sheriff? Ma'am, I'm a farmer before I'm a sheriff. You can't fool a farmer on things like that. All right, Sheriff. We'll start tonight and see what we can find. Uh, just one warning, Mr. Carter. Maybe I sound kind of fantastic-like, but believe me, I ain't been stretching the truth. You go slow, and you go careful. That Lucas is me. Them horses is deadly. Thanks for the warning, Sheriff, but I've met deadly killers before. And Nick is still here, which is more than you can say for most of the killers he's met. Oh. are right, this must be the road that skirts Lucas's estate. Keep your eyes on the left. We ought to sight the house any minute now. It's dark, Nick. Watch for lights. Oh, well, what's the program, Nick? You going to bust right in? Going to try. I don't know how tough Lucas really is. Maybe he's just bluffing Sheriff Crane. Nick, I can see lights off to the left. Yeah? Where away, Skipper? Deep in the woods there. See? Yeah. The lady's right, Nick. I see them. That must be Lucas's house, all right. Yes. There's a gravel drive turning off the road. Here goes. I'll be more than interested to meet Lucas again. Oh, you know him, Nick? Casually. I had a rather distasteful job of checking his credentials for the government some years ago. Intelligence work. Believe me, it was a nasty interview. Nick! I'm a picnic. Someone's bombarding us. Oh, stop the car, Nick. We'll be blown out. Stop anyway. There's a roadblock ahead. Oh. Hey, this doesn't look like a bluff to me. Lucas is playing for Keats. This is private property. Oh. You are trespassing on private property. I shall give you five minutes to get out of here. Where's that voice coming from? He's using a public dress speaker out on the grounds. He's probably got the microphone this in the house. This is your last warning, whoever you are. You have five minutes to get off my ground. Apparently, we haven't much choice. Who 
Father, was that Chinese? It was, and raises a very curious question in a fantastic case. Let's back out to the road and start finding the answer to it. All right. This is far enough. Let's get out. Okay. Well, where are we now, Nick? About half a mile past Lucas's house. We're going to cut into the woods from here, then circle around to the house. Well, I got my flashlight. Lead on, Nick. No, no, Scotty. No flashlights. We do this in the dark. Well, Patsy, you can wait in the car if you want to. Oh, who, me? Why, you talk as though you think I'm scared. Well, aren't you? Well, yes, but I won't admit it. All right. I'll hold your hand, beautiful. Uh, I'm not that scared. Now, listen, we've got to be as quiet as possible. Hey, do you think that we're going to meet any wild horses, Nick? I don't know, Scubby. Nick, you haven't explained yet about Lucas talking in Chinese. Not sure I understand yet myself. Oh, I sure wish I'd covered the beauty contest instead of this guy. Hold everything. What is it? Quiet. Listen. <laughs> Hear that? Jeepers, did I? It sounds like howling. There it is again. Howling horses, I said. <laughs> Nonsense, Nick Carter said. Well, is it nonsense now, Nick? A howling horse. Say, it's coming closer. Are we just going to stand here and wait, Nick? We are not. Gunshot! Come on, hurry. What's happening, Nick? Someone's being chased by Scubby's howling horse. Someone is using a gun to protect himself with a lock. Careful now, whatever you do. Hold your head. Nick? Yes? Straight ahead in that clearing. Yeah, I see. I can see the silhouette. Yes, chasing a man. Almost got him, too. Quick now. Oh, Nick. Cindy, keep moving forward. Oh, I think we're too late, Nick. I know where you are. Get your flashlight out, Scubby, and flash us straight ahead. Quick. I want to get a look at that horse if he's still there. Right. Here you are. There. There isn't anything. There's nothing at all. Nothing but a body of a man sprawled there in the grass. Oh. A body without a head. <laughs> Grimly, Nick paces the last few steps forward to examine the victim of a murder he could not prevent. Who is the dead man? How did Lucas' fantastic creatures track and kill him? Why did Lucas cry a warning in Chinese? Can Nick answer these questions in time? We'll see in just a moment. Modern science is constantly achieving miracles, constantly finding new ways, better ways to do the things which must be done. And science has done its share of service for our American homemakers. Take, for example, the three great Linux home brighteners, which are proving such an aid to women everywhere. There's Linux self-polishing wax, for example, created by leading research chemists to give you the finest. Made from a brand new formula, Linux self-polishing wax offers new beauty, new protection, new skid resistance for every floor surface in your home. And Linux self-polishing wax contains the greatest possible amount of real carnauba wax, For that handsome, satiny finish, only real wax can give. What's more, the underwriter's laboratories have proved by test that any linoleum, hardwood, or rubber tile floor is actually less slippery after Linex self-polishing wax has been applied. And, of course, Linex self-polishing wax saves time two ways, for it takes only a jiffy to apply and dries quickly. And then its beautiful protective surface saves you future work because it's so easy to keep clean. Choose genuine Linux self-polishing wax and know what it is to use the finest. Ask your dealer now for all three great Linux home brighteners. Give your home new beauty the easy Linux way. And now back to our story. The strange story of savage howling horses that hunt and kill men brought Nick, Patsy, and Scubby to the small upstate town of Avernum. When Nick drives out to the estate of C.B. Lucas, famous explorer who has brought the animals to America, he is warned off by Lucas, who shouts at the master detective in Chinese. When Nick, Patsy, and Scubby attempt to steal into the estate on foot, they witness the tracking down and killing of a man by one of Lucas' savage creatures. Now, in the blackness of a forest clearing, they examine the dead body. Oh, what a mess this fellow is. Yes, head torn off completely. Apparently, Dr. Lucas's man-eating horse took it away with him. And did you hear the way it howled? It was like a lion or, or something. Oh, that wasn't any lion or anything else that I ever heard of. You're right, Scully. Wait a minute. Well, this is odd. What, Nick? 
Look at the gun this fellow was carrying. Huh? It's lying beside his right hand. For the love of Pete, what is it? Happens to be a Patterson Colt. Model of 1848. 1848? You mean a hundred years old? Just about. This is one of the original Colt models. Fired with percussion caps. Oh, but that doesn't make sense, Nick. Why would a man defend himself with an antique like that? Well, if you remember, Scabby, that when Lucas warned us off, he talked in Chinese, it does make sense. No, not to me, it doesn't. We will in a very few minutes. Come on, get up to Lucas's house. Well, aren't you going to search that body for identification or something? No, we won't find any. How do you know? Let's concentrate on being quiet, shall we? Okay. Put that flash out, Scabby. Sure. Now stay on your toes. Dr. Lucas' charming pets may be closer than you think. Ned. Yes? I-, I can see the house lights from here, straight ahead. Yes. All right, quick now. Oh. Oh, I sure wish there was a moon. You're not getting romantic, are you, Scubby? Heck no. I'm just scared of the dark. Wait a minute. Listen. It's a funny sound. It's like machinery or something. It's not machinery. Hurry, let's get to the house. Take this path here. Take that sound. It's awfully familiar. I just can't place it. Familiar to you, Scubby? Well, yeah. Coming over the PA, Lucas has on the ground. Over the PA? Right. Now, quick, into the house. Those French windows at the side look open. Open? They're smashed. Like a truck went through them. So they are. Careful of broken glass. Oh, Nick, look at this room. Yeah, looks as if the truck drove through here, too. Yeah. Where is Dr. Lucas? I have a hunch that something's happened to Dr. Lucas, Patsy. Something that accounts for the funny noise you hear over the PA. Come on. I don't like this. The train's advice Oh, for the love of... Yes, I rather expected this. It, it's a body. It's brought alongside that phonograph. And it's a needle running in the last groove in the record that's making that strange sound, Patsy. I'm afraid Dr. Lucas has played this phonograph for the last time. Better take the playing arm off the record, Scotty. Yeah, all right, Nick. Now, let's have a look at this body. Oh, lots of blood. Body quite warm, killed very recently. Mm-hmm. The same way our friend back in the woods was killed. Head torn off. Only this time the head was left with the body. But this isn't Dr. Lucas. Nick, look at the head. He's Chinese. Glory be, you're right, Patsy. Then this explains why we heard a warning in Chinese over the PA when we first drove up to the house, right, Nick? Scubby, start that record again. This man couldn't talk English, so he had an English-speaking record made to, to warn people off the ground, Play it, right? Scubby, play it quick. Okay. Turn off the PA first. We'll hear it direct. Right, Nick. This is private property. You are trespassing on private property. I will give you five minutes to get out of here. What'd I tell you, Nick? That's the voice we heard. This is your last warning, whoever you are. Five minutes to get off my ground. Please, turn off machine. Please, turn off machine. Oh, the love of... A couple of hatchet men. Please, so don't move. A socket and self-highly expert in use of lethal firearms. Kindly, raise arms to extreme vertical positions. Remain with back against wall. Thank you. Oh, now listen, wise guy. Please, to remain silent. Oh. We have made long journey for most prosperous meeting, Mr. Lucas. Lucas? Well, this Quiet, is... Patsy. was extremely injudicious to take away Go Chi Chang, Mr. Lucas. Rash action put miserable selves to extreme expense of body and purse for long journey. Yes? Now necessary to locate Go Chi Chang at once. It's ever that number two associate as yet unsuccessful in task. Remains for self and miserable number one associate. Hey, what in place is it? Mr. Lucas. You will please inform this person of locality of Goshi Chang. May miserable Fang Pai remind Honorable Mr. Lucas, this person highly barbaric species, lack refining benefits of civilized education, much prepared to obtain required information with cruel methods of contemptible savage. Golly, Nick. Oh, who is this Goshi Jung character you birds are after? He's the guy I think you mean. He's dead. Be like... quiet, Scubby. Ah, this note's highly interesting. It's true, Mr. Lucas, that Gushi Chang departed to join all of our ancestors. Whatever it is. Then the uh, task of this person reaches to minimum. Only necessary to ensure demise of you and friends and then return to home. Our demise? But we... Then, uh, this is why I'm in King Fu and I'll... This is the payoff. Look out now, Scubby. Here goes the phonograph. This way, Patsy. Scubby, get moving. All right. Through this door. Move fast. Oh, you blocked him off with that photograph like a 
Colbeck. You can't block bullets as easily. Oh, they may recover enough any minute now to start shooting. This must be the kitchen. Straight ahead and out the back door. Do you think we can shake them, Nick? We move fast enough we can. All right, I'll get the door. Through, Patsy, quick. Come on, Scubby. Right with you. Oh. oh. Now what? Quiet and keep running. Come on. We'll stand a 50-50 chance of shaking them in the dark out here. Why didn't you tell them you weren't looking? You think they'd believe me? Hey, this looks like a garage ahead. In then, hurry. Careful. There's a car here. Don't bang into it. All right, now what, Nick? Oh, we can just hold out long enough. Sheriff Crane will rescue us. Huh? What do you mean, Patsy? Well, when you were examining the body, I called the sheriff and notified him about the two deaths. What? He said he was coming right up as soon as he could get his posse together. Oh, good work, Patsy. That's for a little darling every time. That's about the worst news I've ever had. But, Nick, I... I understand, Patsy. It's too late to explain now. All right, here's what we do. Yeah, we're listening, Nick. We'll get into this car. Drive out of the garage like six again. Get past those two killers. Uh-huh. Get in. Okay. okay. I'll take the wheel. You two hold on now. Yeah. All right. Here goes. <laughs> I'm cutting straight across the lawns and fields. Let's hope the tires hold. Oh, they fired! They don't get us now. We're safe. I think we, I think we made it. You all right back there? I guess so. Watch yeah. out! We're going straight through the fields to that patch of woods where we found the first victim of Koji Jung. Oh, for Pete's sake, why? I'm going to perform the nastiest piece of business I've ever been forced to do. I'm going to run a human drag line. <laughs> Scotty, this is what we do. We're going to take the body of the unfortunate fellow and drag it. Oh, holy smokes, really? Get across Lucas's land, away from the house. Quick, give me a hand with the body. Okay, Nick. But why, Nick? Set a drag line for Do Go She Jump. I'm going to start moving, shall we? Okay, Nick. Nick, what's a drag line? Folks use it down south for fox hunting, Patsy. Especially when there aren't any foxes in the neighborhood. It's an artificial trail. Well, I understand, but why do we have... For the sake of Sheriff Crane and any men he may bring with him. Don't forget, Dosey Jung is around the house and grounds. And the killer. we better turn ourselves into bait to save their lives. Good old howling horse. Why didn't Lucas leave him where he found him? Nick, did Lucas discover Dosey Jung? No, Bessie. A gentleman by the name of Marco Polo discovered him. Marco Polo? Yes. I'm just the other side of that tree, Scubby. All right, Nick. Dosey okay. Jung was discovered many centuries ago. But he's unknown in the Western world. He was, that is, until Lucas brought him here. I warn you. Sooner or later, he'll pick up the scent of this trail we're making and come after us. And believe me, it'll be a tremendous shock. Oh, nothing could shock me anymore. Well, you've never seen anything like go see junk, Scubby. Dolly, I've got the queen. Fortunately, there's a brisk wind blowing. If he doesn't pick up this blood trail, maybe he'll pick up ours. Any... Wait, wait. You hear that? Yeah, I hear it. We're in luck. We must send it. Keep moving, Scubby. Here at the top of that little hill. All right. He got closer. He's as fast as a racehorse. Yeah, and he howls like a pack of... Nick, I just got it. Good. No time to talk about it. All right. This is far enough. Put the body down, Scubby. Okay. Get your flashlight ready. Pass it. Yes, Nick. I want you to stand to my left. Here's an extra magazine for my automatic. Hold it. When I yell for it, slap it into my wrapped hand. Okay. Oh, what a monster. Stand by. Oh, it sounds awful close. He should be in sight any second now. Right, Scubby, straight ahead. Right. Oh. Nick, for the love of me. It is a horse. A stallion. No. No, it's a dog. A giant dog. And a killer. Look out. Oh. You can't stop him. Oh, Nick. Magazine, Patsy, quick. Oh, thing's a giant. For Pete's sake, Nick, get that gun loaded. Right, here we are. Patsy, it's all right. We've stopped him. Steady. Steady. Oh, golly, Nick. Oh, golly. He was so big. Fantastic. Blooming up and just got his flashlight. It's all right. It's all right. Nick. Nick, do you mean to say that the last thing was a dog? I do. That was Goshi Jung. The fabulous, almost mythical Tibetan master. This is the first and probably the last time we'll ever see this breed. And in killing it, we've destroyed the monster that murdered Dr. C.B. Lucas. In just a few minutes, Nick will be back to give you the final details of today's story and describe the strange creature thought to be the howling horse. When your furniture was new, of course you were proud of its handsome, gleaming appearance. Since then, it may be that finger marks, dust smudges, the cloudy look of inferior polish have made your furniture look dull and unattractive. 
But with Linex Cream Polish to help you out, you can restore its appearance in double quick time. For Linex Cream Polish cleans as it polishes, cutting the job in half. Yes, one quick application of Linex Cream Polish removes all the cloudy dullness from your furniture, leaves it gleaming and beautiful. And because it dries hard, leaving no oily film on the surface to attract more dust, it saves you future work as well. No wonder so many thousands of modern American women are coming to depend on Linex Cream Polish, the up-to-date beauty treatment for fine furniture. Get Linex Cream Polish now. You'll find all three great Linex Home Brighteners, Linex Cream Polish, Linex Self-Polishing Wax, and Linex Clear Gloss, the longer-lasting brush-on finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And remember that your dealer is headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that brings quick new sparkle to walls and ceilings. Chemtone covers in one coat, dries in one hour. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. I had heard of the Tibetan Mastiff before, Patsy. Hmm? You'll find an interesting chapter on that strange animal in a pamphlet on Chinese dogs published by the Quan Quan Company in Los Angeles in 1944. It's one of the oldest defense breeds in the world, and is so revered in Tibet that none has ever been allowed out of that country. Go see Jung means dog of Tibet. Oh. Well, aren't there any pictures, Nick? No, the Tibetans do not permit pictures to be taken, Patsy. Oh. All we have are the descriptions of various explorers from Marco Polo down. All describe the giant dog as being the size of a horse. Well, it sure was, Nick. There have been attempts to steal one of the mastiffs and bring them out of the country, but in each case, the dog has either been stolen back or killed. So Dr. Luke has managed to steal Goshi Chang. Right. He brought it to his estate and then lived in constant fear, knowing the Tibetans would never let him keep the dog. He knew that sooner or later they'd send men to kill it. And they did. And that's why he kept himself locked up? Precisely. Lucas made that recorded warning to play over his PA system whenever strangers drove up. It was undoubtedly worn by some sort of mechanical device that was set off by our entrance to the grounds. He also repeated it in Chinese to warn off any Chinese gunmen who might have trailed him here. Mm, then it really was Lucas we heard. Yes. You see, Patsy, the dog apparently turned savage and broke loose from the chains with which it was confined. Lucas could not recapture it. So it roamed the estate, killing everything it met. Oh. In fact, right before our eyes, we saw it kill a man. And that was Mr. Fang's number two assistant, prowling around the grounds. The mastiff ran off with a dead man's head in his jaws, crashed into Lucas's house, and attacked Lucas himself. Then it dropped the head of the Chinese and tore off Lucas's head and rushed off with it. Exactly. Oh. That's why you and Scubby leaped to the conclusion that the head we found alongside Lucas's body actually belonged to that body. Well, when did you first begin to understand what was happening, Nick? When I saw that the first victim had been carrying an old Patterson coat. Hmm? There's only one section of the world that continues to use antique firearms, Patsy. And that's the mountain regions of China. In Tibet, you'll still find soldiers equipped with flintlock rifles and old Civil War weapons. Golly. Well... What about those killers from Tibet that came after the dog, Nick? The men who thought you were Lucas. Probably slipped off and started back for home. We'll never see them again, and there's no need to, really. They haven't been guilty of any crime. All the guilty parties in question have already paid in full. Well, Nick, that was certainly an unusual tale. What's next week's story going to be about? Next week, Ken, we're going to meet a strange young man who, as far as anyone knew, never touched alcohol at all, yet apparently came home intoxicated night after night. Then one evening, he was murdered. And that was the evening he carried home with him can opener seven feet long. And the murder was revealed by a silkworm. A giant can opener and telltale silkworms. Sounds like a swell story. What's its title, Nick? The Case of the Worried Worm. Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Long Clark is starred as Nick. Charlotte Manson plays Patsy. Original music is played by George Wright. Script is by Alfred Bester. The programs are fictional, and any resemblance therein to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs> Master.
Mr. Detective is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linex home brightness. Linex clear gloss, Linex cream polish, and Linex self-polishing wax. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linex dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, actually, when I did this show, I was checking around to um, other uh, episodes just to make confirm the time because it, it called to mind so many of those really fun uh, early shows from uh, 1943 and early 1944, particularly with uh, the return of Stubby here. And uh, a very interesting case. Uh, and even a little bit at the end, you felt like uh, I felt like I was slightly educated, believe it or not, uh, which isn't something you expect from Nick Carter. But uh, a very fun case and uh, not so, you know, definitely much more of a Pulp Fiction feel than we've gotten from uh, some of the other more recent episodes. All right, well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and we have a couple App Store uh, comments. Granny5372 writes in the iTunes uh, store, I absolutely love this app. The quality is excellent, and I love the commentary. Interesting stories about the actors and shows. Thank you for this. And uh, then I uh, have a comment from Glenn who says, uh, love this podcast. I've been listening on iTunes for about three years and find Adam's knowledgeable commentary and show insights to be just as entertaining as the shows themselves. I'm just glad that it's available to us uh, for Android, too. Uh, thanks so much, Glenn. And for those of you who do have Androids and wonder about an Android app, because I refer to the iTunes app, Android app is available through the Amazon uh, App Store, so you just need to have that installed on your mobile device uh, to be able to access that. Well, that will actually uh, do it for today. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And next Thursday, uh, be with us for another episode of Nick Carter. In the meanwhile... Send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.